Miracy. Once upon a time, there were three princesses who were sisters. They set out on a journey to see their entire kingdom. They enjoyed the beautiful cities and rich mountain villages of their country. Everywhere they went, they feasted and slept on silken sheets. But one day, they came upon a ruined palace surrounded by a wild rose garden. The three sisters each walked in a different direction to discover how they could enter the palace. A crow hopped out from behind a bush right in front of the youngest princess. His wings were torn and bleeding. He leaned to one side. The bird could not fly. The youngest princess felt sorry for the bird and said out loud, If only I could heal your wings so you could fly again. Hi, I'm Lisa Bloom, the story coach, and you're listening to Once Upon a Business. In each episode, we explore a story a fairy tale, folk tale, or traditional story, so that we can discover the amazing lessons relevant for business and for entrepreneurs. To the young princess's surprise, the crow spoke. I'm really a prince who has been enchanted by monsters. In the palace is a room with a golden bed. If someone could sleep in that room without making a sound, no matter what they saw or felt or heard for an entire year, I would be saved. I would be a prince again. The princess agreed. When she told her sisters what she'd planned to do, they became angry. You're a fool to help a bird, said one. The other said, a bird cannot talk, and if it was to talk, it would be because it was evil. But the youngest sister did not change her mind. The two older girls went away as quickly as they could before it grew dark. The very first night, the princess awoke. She heard the sound of the door opening. The room filled with monsters. Their mouths were almost as large as their heads and their bellies were so big she could hardly see their feet. They darted back and forth. They made a terrible noise as they lit the fire in the hearth. Then they set down a huge cauldron filled with water on the flames. They hopped up and down and ran back and forth. At first the princess was terrified, but the monsters were so funny looking that she laughed to herself (laughs) in silence. She thought about running away, but then she thought of the black crow and his torn wings and she did not move. Toward morning, the monsters lifted her up and carried her toward the fireplace. Now she was truly frightened, but she bit her lips and made not a sound. Just as they were about to throw her into the pot, the sun rose and the monsters disappeared. Exhausted, the princess rushed back to the golden bed and fell asleep. In the afternoon, when she awoke, and went outside, the crow returned. The tips of his wings were healed. Thank you, he said. If you had made a single sound, my sufferings would have doubled. Each night, it was the same. The monsters leaped and danced and boiled water in the cauldron. And each morning, they were about to throw her in the pot when the sun rose and they disappeared. And each day, the crow's wings became stronger and stronger. At the end of a year, the crow's wings were completely healed and the monsters no longer returned. However, the crow did not turn back into a prince and the princess asked him what else she could do to restore him to his true form. If you work as a servant for one year, then the enchantment will be broken, said the bird. The princess sought work as a servant. All day she cleaned and tended pigs and in the evening she spun flax. She slept in a tiny cottage with barely a blanket to keep her warm. She worked until her back ached and her soft hands were weary. The year passed slowly and many times she thought of returning to her sisters, wondering if what they had said was true. But still, she kept her promise. On the very last day of the year, the princess heard the rustling of wings. The door of her house opened and in walked a noble young man. I am the prince, he said and knelt down and kissed her hands. Your strength and your goodness have saved me. Together they returned to the prince's palace. It was as new as the sun when it rises in the morning and the rose bushes bloomed in every color. The rooms were filled with people and the garden was alive with birds and beasts. Everyone bowed before the princess and thanked her for never forgetting her promise. In time, the young princess married the prince. They ruled together equally on two thrones. 
they ruled with great kindness and everyone, even the two oldest sisters, lived happily ever after. This was a tale from the Black Sea retold by Laura Sims. When I first read this story, my reaction was, oh no, not another tale about a devoted woman that becomes enslaved so that she can save a man. And she's rewarded by marrying the prince and they live happily ever after. It's so outdated. And my thought was, do we really need to be telling these stories anymore? Do women still have to sacrifice themselves in order for men to feel powerful and free? But if we look at it from a business standpoint and disregard the archetypes, prince, princess, we see that the girl is so convinced of the crow's story and of the possibility to heal him that she willingly sets out to endure whatever obstacle she encounters. That type of conviction is needed when you start a business. There will always be external or internal monsters or conditions that will try to stop you from reaching your goal. The princess sacrifices her safety and comfort, risks being killed or scared to death because she believes in her path. She wants to find healing and freedom for the prince. In this way, she's a very strong young woman. She goes against the grain and never loses faith. She conquers her fear of the monsters and is willing to become a servant, to roll up her sleeves to do the work that needs to be done, exactly as you need to do as an entrepreneur starting out. In Christianity and literature, the black crow calls up death or a great change in someone's life. It can also symbolize prophecy, transformation, and freedom. And so it is in this story, the prophecy that the crow will turn into a prince, and in freeing him, she frees herself through commitment, faith, and hard work. I think the same is true in business. With commitment, faith, and hard work, we get to experience transformation and create something brand new. And this is often exactly what we need to be free from our previous careers and lives. When I decided to start my business, it was because I wanted to break free from the corporate life I'd been experiencing. I wanted to have my own time and work on my own terms. So in creating this business, I became free. And it certainly required a lot of commitment, faith, and hard work. This story also speaks to the value of integrity. The princess keeps on working no matter how much hardship it requires from her. Integrity is important in business. I know of so many people who have been persuaded by great marketing or a savvy salesperson, but ended up not getting the service or product that they believed they would. My father always used to say that your word, your reputation was built on integrity. Nothing can replace that. And yet the prince, when he was a crow, didn't tell the princess that it would take two years to free him. I wonder, did he not know? Like how we start projects or our businesses thinking things will be much quicker than they usually take. Like construction on a house that always takes longer than we're led to believe. Or even getting started in business. It's never as fast as we might want. Maybe underestimating timeframes is what actually keeps us in the game. It's what makes it feel achievable. And so when we finally get what we want, we can look back and see that it was all worth it. Even though had we known at the outset how long it would take, we may not have made the same choices. And yes, finally the princess got to marry the prince. But more than that, she had proven to herself that she had integrity, strength of will, and strength of character. She learned that she could endure whatever was thrown her way. There have been times in my business where I have had to endure hardship, fluctuation of income that was like the monster of financial ruin raising its head, or self-doubt and lack of support that had me question all that I was doing and ask myself if I could really make it work. And yet I can recognize that every time I face this kind of challenge, I emerge more clear, more determined, and with insights that have really helped the next time. Maybe we need to go through the trials that life and business throw at us so that we can develop resilience and strength to keep going and to do great things. And maybe this is what the princess needed so she could become strong and smart and rule equally on her throne alongside the prince in peace and harmony with kindness and wisdom. Even after all this thinking through what the story means and how it relates to business, I'm left with this inkling of discomfort. 
The story that ends with wedding bells and the prince and princess living happily ever after, I have to admit it still comforts me as it did when I was a child. Yet the adult in me is screaming, no, it's not as easy as that. But perhaps I'm missing the point. Maybe it is as easy as that. Maybe to live and work in kindness, having gone through struggle, and seeing and telling the story of that struggle is exactly what it's about. Maybe it's time to relax and take it easy, to lean in to the love and kindness in life and work, and stop trying to slay dragons. I'm Lisa Bloom, and you've been listening to Once Upon a Business. You can find out more about me at story-coach.com. That's story-coach.com. Once Upon a Business is part of the Miracy FM podcast network, which also includes such shows as Just Between Coaches and Course Lab. This episode of Once Upon a Business was produced by Cynthia Lam. Mishi Lance and Jeff Govertson assemble the episode. Danny Inney is our executive producer. Post-production was by Post Office Sound. To catch the episodes that are coming up on Once Upon a Business, please follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening right now. And if you like the show, please leave us a starred review. It really does help us out. Thank you. We'll see you next time.